Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. And today we're going to be looking at the best units for each Eldar craft world. Now, we're only going to be looking at the named craft worlds that actually have predetermined traits. So, craft worlds like Bealtan, Uthway, and yes, Altnazar as well, we will be looking at. We're going to stay away from the far flung craft worlds and, and basically just take a look at the best unit from each named craft world. And we're also going to talk about why each unit is good with that particular craft world. Now, of course, these are going to be my picks and my suggestions. There are many different units for each craft world that are very effective. But for the sake of simplicity, we're only going to be looking at one today. So the first craft world is the Bealtan craft world. And my pick for the Bealtan craft world was Striking Scorpions. And I think Striking Scorpions are probably the best general combat unit in the entire Codex. They're very effective in close combat, and they also have a lot of abilities to tackle a lot of different types of enemy units. But why did I pick Striking Scorpions with the Bealtan in particular, over other units like Howling Banshees and Shining Spears? The reason why I chose Striking Scorpions is because not only are they an excellent combat unit that deals mortal wounds and that are good against a lot of different targets, but their reroll per unit is very useful in the Exarch, who most of the time will be automatically wounding due to the crushing blows Exarch power. However, I would be a liar and a cheat if I told you that that was the only reason I picked this unit. The other reason I picked this unit is because of the Wrath of the Shrines stratagem, which is unique to the Bealtan Croft World. That stratagem is absolutely brutal on a unit like Striking Scorpions. And let me go ahead and tell you why. Basically, the Wrath of the Shrines stratagem allows a unit of Aspect Warriors to get an additional hit for every six to hit that they roll. So, when Striking Scorpions charge in, they get four attacks apiece, right? So, for each six they roll to hit, they're going to generate an additional automatic hit. Now, the other cool thing about this is that Striking Scorpions also have Manda Blasters. And they have an ability called Sustained Assault. So, essentially, for each hit of a six that you get with these guys... You get an additional hit for Sustained Assault, and you get an additional hit for Wrath of the Shrines. Now, the cool thing is, is the additional hits that you get from Wrath of the Shrines also benefit from the Manda Blaster's ability. However, be careful. You do have to separate your dice on this one because additional hits scored from the Sustained Assault ability will not generate Manda Blaster. Mortal Wound proc. So you do have to roll those separately. However, this is an insane amount of extra attacks. And to just give you a general idea, a unit like Striking Scorpions, if you have 10 in the unit, will have close to 42 attacks. So that means for every 6 to hit, you're getting two, <clears throat> 2 additional hits. So, you do some quick math, you realize that you'll probably, with 42 attacks, you'll probably score about 7 sixes which will generate 14 additional attacks. So that's basically three and a half Striking Scorpions worth of attacks. Half of those will be able to benefit from Manda Blasters, while the other half won't. And for every six you roll to wound against an infantry target, you're dealing a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. So Striking Scorpions can just mulch through just about anything in a Bealtan Craft World, especially as a large unit of 10, and it doesn't really matter what they hit. As long as that unit is an infantry unit, they will chew through it with absolute ease and with no mercy. Especially with things like Guide, these guys can absolutely wreck about just about any unit in the game that's an infantry-based unit, even extreme Death Stars. As long as they are an infantry unit that is susceptible to Manda Blaster Fire, they will get absolutely wrecked. So that's my pick for the Bealtan Croft World, and I think it's very fitting because Striking Scorpions are an Aspect Warrior unit. That has a lot of combat applications, 
and really benefits from that Wrath of the Shrine's ability. Next up is the Alatar Craftworld, and the best unit in the Alatar Craftworld, of course, I think this kind of goes without saying, but my pick for them are Rangers. And personally, I really like Rangers, especially with the Alatar, but I think in particular, the reason why I chose Rangers with this Craftworld isn't because of the fluff. I'm not going based on fluff at all, but because Rangers get a lot of special bonuses when they are in cover and in the Electaw Craft World, essentially, as long as they're outside of 12 inches of enemy units being shot at, they're always going to count as being in light cover. In addition, if they're in a terrain feature, they also count as being in dense cover, and Rangers get a plus one bonus armor save whenever they are in, or counted as in, cover. And of course, Rangers also benefit from the Alatox Stratagem, Pathfinder Ambush. They're also able to move without penalty through terrain, ensuring that they can get where they need to to score on secondary objectives. And I think this is why I chose them for the Alatox Craft World, because unlike other Ranger units from other armies, they are very vulnerable when out in the open, scoring on secondary objectives and things like that. Alatox Rangers... Because they're always at least getting light cover when outside of 12 inches of enemy units shooting them, will be a little bit more durable and will be able to complete actions and get to where they need to go on the board and use things like scout the enemy much easier and much more effectively. And also you won't have to take that pesky gloom field upgrade to ensure that they're going to get dense cover as long as they're in a piece of terrain, they will also benefit from dense cover. So, Alatok Rangers, much improved over their Crawford Cousins, and also just much easier to actually play the secondary objective game with them and get them to successfully survive, to score on things like Scout the Enemy, and Retrieve Nephilim Data, and things like that. Next up is the Samhain Crawford, and for this Crawford, I picked the Shining Spears, as the best unit for the Croft World. And mostly because the same Hain are a very combat-oriented Croft World, and Shining Spears are a combat-centric jet bike unit that benefits from a lot of the stratagems and special abilities that the same Hain Croft World has to offer. So it's pretty straightforward with this unit. Shining Spears are excellent in close combat, and the same Hain has a lot of close combat bonuses. They get to reroll their charge rolls and can fall back and charge in the same turn to get a better engagement when they get stuck in a bad situation. They can also advance and charge in the same turn with the Crawford Stratagem. This gives them an insane reach that a lot of opponents won't see coming. So that's 16 movement plus a 6 inch advance with the Ride the Wind ability that puts them at tw a 22 inch move plus. 2d6 to charge, which you can always use Strains of Fate on, and you can also re-roll that charge. So they can charge over extreme distances and make it into combat basically turn one, and that's why I picked this unit as the best and most effective Croft World unit for the same Hain. The next Croft World is Croft World Uthway, and I think Uthway has probably the best chance of being the strongest Croft World after the recent nerfs along with the Beal Tan. And the good thing about Uthway is that they work very well with a lot of different units. So it was hard to pick this one. But I ended up going with support weapons because I think support weapons are very powerful at the moment and they benefit very well from the Uthway special rules. So the first thing is, is they benefit from the Black Guardian stratagem. Because they have the Guardian's keyword, this allows them to get a plus one to hit and become much more accurate. And this is especially important when looking at things like D-Cannons and Shadow Weavers, which are essentially going to be at minus one ballista skill when firing at units that are outside of line of sight. They also have increased durability from their craft roll traits, getting a six plus invul save, as well as a five plus ignore mortal wounds save. And this will allow them to survive against special rules, psychic powers like smite, and things like this that 
your enemy might want to target them with because again they will be fairly durable especially if in some light cover behind some obscuring terrain or something like that your opponent may resort to other means to deal with them and when those other means come they will at least have a five plus save against it and to a slightly lesser extent they can also benefit from the martial citizenry stratagem which gives them rerolls of one to hit again because they have the guardians keyword they can actually use that stratagem to become even a little bit more accurate if you're willing to spend the extra command point on it in some cases i think in mo <clears throat> most cases you're going to want to use the black guardian stratagem but you could use them in combination to become even more accurate on the same turn because remember if you have two units of these you're not going to be able to use the black guardian stratagem twice so having both of them available will make two units of these a little bit more accurate and on to the iandan crawford and for the iandan i have chosen wraith blades especially the version with the ghost axe and force shield and honestly, I chose them because, again, Iandin benefits a lot from having a lot of Wraith units. They're very tough, and they're typically a faction that likes to rely on extra durability to get things done. Their craft world trait allows them to ignore 1 AP from AP negative 1 and 2 weapons, which makes them even tougher against anti-infantry fire and sometimes heavier weaponry. And the Guided Raid Sight Stratagem allows them to act further away from their Spirit Tears so they can capture objectives where your opponent doesn't necessarily think they're going to be supported. And honestly, if you look at the Guided Raid Sight ability, the Spirit Mark ability from the Spirit Tear is very powerful, allowing them to get a modifier to their wound is very strong, especially when you're wounding on threes, and this will become wounding on twos with the ghost axe force shield combination and i particularly like the force shields because they give them an invul save and make them incredibly tough against enemy fire and make them very hard to remove from objectives and close combat and lastly we have the altnazar craft world so the altnazar craft world is a little bit of an odd craft world because they work really well in close combat and they're really good at denying enemy psychic abilities. Basically through either invul saves, mortal wound denial, and things like that. But the best unit I think with the Altnazar isn't a Psyker, isn't any close combat unit in particular. But Warwalkers with Eldari Missile Launchers. And basically the reason why I like Warwalkers with Missile Launchers with the Altnazar is because of the Withering Volleys Stratagem. And this essentially allows them to hit both infantry and vehicles or monsters much harder with an additional minus 1 AP. You combine this with things like Reveal to negate enemy cover saves. And all of a sudden your Warwalkers are hitting very strongly with either Plasma Grenades excuse me, not plasma grenades, the plasma shot at minus 2 AP, or the single solid shot, the star shot, I should say, at minus 3 AP to be able to, you know, take down tanks much easier and be able to take down heavy infantry like Terminators and stuff like that much better. And this stratagem only costs one command point, and it's pretty effective, especially on a unit of these guys firing six... Eldar Missile Launchers. And to be honest with you, anytime I'm running the Altnazar, I would always bring at least one unit of Warwalkers with Eldari Missile Launchers for this exact stratagem. It's very powerful, and it gives you a lot of versatility on top of the versatility that Warwalkers with Eldar Missile Launchers already have. So, in conclusion, these are my picks for the best unit for every Crawford based on their synergies and rules. But the truth is, is that there are many more units in each craft world that are very effective. And I can think of several others from each one of those craft worlds that are extremely effective with those craft worlds. And for example, with the Bealtan, not only are Striking Scorpions very effective, but also Swooping Hawks, Warp Spiders, and Howling Banshees. The Youth Way are very good with 
Windrider Jet Bikes because they have the Guardian keyword, as well as Warlocks, Farseers, and honestly, also just regular Guardians. The LA Talk are good with support weapons, as well as Warp Spiders. And of course, when we're talking about the Iandin, pretty much all of the Wraith units are very effective with Iandin, as well as some other units. But to be honest with you guys, the ones that I picked in this video are the ones that stand out most to me. But leave a comment in the comment section if you guys think that there's another unit that might be good with these craft worlds. And let me know what your thoughts are. I've decided to do a video series coming up this week and into next week that's going to be focusing on the different craft worlds after the nerfs and which ones I think are going to be the most effective craft worlds post nerf. And my prediction is that both the Bealtan and the Uthwig craft world are going to emerge as the strongest craft worlds outside of the far flung craft worlds. However, I have a sneaking suspicion that the Alatok craft world is also going to be very effective. Now, again, it's I'm not sure on that one, but if I had to pick a wild card, I think it would be the Alatok craft world sneaking in there a little bit. All right, everybody, that's it for today's video. It was a shorter video today as I prepare uh, some longer videos on Crawford Bealtan and Crawford Uthway post nerf, as well as the new mission pack in Nephilim. I have been working on a video covering the different missions in Nephilim and kind of in general how to play those missions out for you guys. So stay tuned for some more Crawford content coming in the next couple of weeks. And as always, if you do have a comment or a suggestion on a video, please leave it down in the comment section and I will take your considerations into account. And to be honest with you guys, I've gotten some really good ideas from you and I hope they continue. All right, everybody. Peace out. See you guys later.